All right, so you have this paper, and you'll see that um, on the front I have a graph here, and I did that so that you could rip this off, and when you're using the information in this packet, you can have the graph and that information separate so you don't have to be flipping back and forth. Right now I'm going to take this graph and put it off to the side, and I want to read through this front bit of information with you because um, it's got some pretty important information that I don't want you to skip over. All right, so we're going to read through here. Um, it says, earthquakes happen when large parts of Earth's crust and upper mantle move suddenly. It is difficult to predict exactly when and where an earthquake will happen, even when a lot of data is available. Now, I'd like you to notice, and I'd like you to highlight, so if you need to get a highlighter, pause this, um, the crust and the upper mantle. They have given us um, one of our vocabulary words without using our vocabulary words. And at this point, you should know that Earth's crust and upper mantle combine to make the lithosphere. And so you need to make sure that you are doing this on your paper too. Highlight that and write that on there. So in other words, earthquakes happen when large parts of Earth's lithosphere is another way of saying that. Now remember this lithosphere, this surface layer of the Earth that includes the crust and the upper mantle is broken into some very large pieces and also some small pieces. We're going to learn most of the large pieces here eventually. And again, earthquake prediction is really, 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 really difficult. Um, you know, they might be able to give you a range, like the, the, the next big earthquake should happen in the next 20 years, but they can't say something like next week sometime, generally. So in the next paragraph, earthquakes produce shock waves called seismic waves. I'm going to um, highlight that, and I want you to highlight that also. And I'd like to point out that basically what we're talking about is energy. And because of the law of conservation of energy, we know energy can't be created or destroyed. So where did this energy come from? This energy was stored in rocks and it was released. So that's the weird thing. Energy can actually be stored inside of rocks when they're pressing together or trying to slip past one another um, or trying to move apart. They are storing energy and when that motion actually occurs that can release earthquakes and again that will release seismic waves. Um, these waves can be detected using seismographs. Some seismic waves are surface waves, while others can travel through the Earth. The table shows the properties of the two types of seismic waves that can travel through Earth. All right, so let's look at the table. We've got P waves. We can see that they're the fastest. We can see that they can travel through solids and liquids. I've got S waves. They're slower, and they can only travel through solids. And then over here I have a picture of S waves, and a picture of the diagram of the Earth, and you can see that they are stopping right here. They can't seem to be able to go through that layer. Well, why? We know they can travel through solids only, so if they're not traveling through this layer, there must be they must be hitting a liquid. And of course, in this case, they're hitting the liquid outer core, so they stop. So they can't even get to the solid inner core because the liquid outer core is stopping them because they can't travel through liquids. They can only travel through solids. And then if you look over here, here's the P waves, and you can see the P waves can travel through liquids and solids, so you can see they have no problem when they enter that liquid outer core, they can travel through there. So we're going to keep reading. Um, seismic waves, or sorry, seismic reflection. Seismic waves bounce or reflect off of rock boundaries of different rock type. I'm going to highlight seismic reflection, and then I'm going to point out that really when you're talking about reflection, you're talking about those waves bouncing, in other words, reflecting off. Um, it says, the seismograph records the time it takes for the waves to travel to the boundary, reflect off of it, and return to the surface. That's what this is over here. So here, the energy source, earthquake waves, seismic waves are released. You can see that they hit a different layer, and then they bounce off of it. They reflect back. Um, and then these seismograph stations record that. Uh, seismologists can measure the time it takes and calculate the depth 
to the boundary. They've done those calculations for us in that in this activity, thankfully. But I am going to highlight that to point out that that is showing seismic reflection. Um, seismic waves reflect off of a rock boundary in the earth. Again, you can see that here and return to the seismograph stations on the surface, which are there. Seismic reflection waves change speed and direction. All right, so when we're talking about the word refraction, we're talking about a seismic wave changing its direction. Um, and it says this happens when they enter a medium of different density than the one they just passed through. All right, so we're gonna look at this diagram in a minute. This diagram right over here, this shows refraction. They don't have it labeled but this is refraction over here. We'll look at this in a minute. Seismic waves will travel at different speeds depending on the medium or materials they pass through. So a medium is just a material. Material could be um, a rock like granite or a rock like gabbro. A medium could be air um, through which the wave is traveling. All right, so examples, low speed layer, seismic wave travels slow. So here, let's say that this is granite. My seismic wave is traveling here, and then it hits, let's say this is Gabrio. They talk about that seismic waves travel faster when they hit Gabrio, probably because this is a much denser rock. And you can see that it changes its direction. It doesn't, it doesn't bounce back, it doesn't reflect. It just changes its direction as it enters that new layer. And that is what we refer to as refraction. <clears throat> 